Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to take the time to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And today I'm super excited because I'm gonna do another video on Magic Leap. I think Magic Leap has been great. I've been learning a lot and I'm working on a new game. So I wanna show you my latest changes, which is basically by using the placement script that Magic Leap provided and implementing a custom solution for the game that I'm working on. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what problem we had in the previous video that I that I wanted to fix by rewriting the placement script. So if I show you, this is a video that I posted in Twitter. And if you notice, you can see that the, let me mute it. You can see that the bounding box, it's not aligned with the structure. It also, the implementation that I, that I had originally done didn't, didn't calculate the size of the structure so it wasn't it wasn't really accurate so I want to show you some of the things that I did in this video to basically to fix that problem you can kind of see how the bounding box is is rotated it's not aligned with the with the structure so let's go ahead and go back to to unity and show you how it works right now so if I hit play let me go ahead and put this right here okay there we go so so now what I'm doing is I have I have an offset on the bounding box so I'm calculating the size of the building and the reason why I'm calculating them is because as you know if I if I hit the letter X I am basically regenerating the building procedurally and when I do that it changes the bounding box size because I am now using the same size that I'm calculating for the building to resize the bounding box. And I also have an offset because I, I didn't really want the, the box to be touching the walls. It just didn't look, it didn't look right. So the other thing that I'm gonna be doing, and I already have it coded, is if I go into the placement controller, and so the way that, it, that it's broken out right now is I have a, a structure indicator, and this structure indicator gets created dynamically. So when I hit play, I go through a routine. I create these using the game object uh, primitive shapes, and then and then basically I resize it based on the bounding that I have set on the structure. So you're gonna see that right now it's set to red, and right now I don't have I'm not running anything in the in the device or or the remote, so I wouldn't it wouldn't know when to turn to green, but Obviously, if you can place it in an area, you, it will turn to green. If you can, let's say that you're touching a wall or you're, it doesn't have enough space to fit this structure, then it'll show as red. So, and then the structure clone is just what you what you saw in the previous video where, where I'm using, which I'm using to regenerate the, the structure and have parameters. And this is all the procedural, the procedural work I, we did previously. All right, so now that I have that, I can show you. So the other thing that I did in this video is I also wanted to, instead of going into the Magic Leap remote, I wanted to test here because opening the Magic Leap remote and then getting any, everything hooked up takes some time. So instead of doing that, I have the same keys that I'm using for the Magic Leap remote controller to regenerate. So I'm, I'm basically hitting the letter X to get it regenerated. And, and another thing that I also did is I started looking into how I could incorporate shader graphs. So I'm gonna be showing you the some of the things that I had to do to make it work with the version that I'm running right now. So first let's go in and show you some of the code that I did for the indicator, the bounding box that is surrounding the, the building. So let me go and open VS Code. And, and the code is fairly simple. The the big thing was making sure that I that I would, you know, I, I I knew what I needed to do as far as like connecting to the build to connecting to the cycle of a placement script. So and when I say that is basically how do I know when I can place a structure? How how do I determine if it's you know if that area it's going to be an area where my building is gonna be fitting in. And and I did that re uh, previously by using a script the Magic Leap provider and we can we could go ahead and, and look at it so I can show you what they had. And let me see where, cause I'm not using it anymore. 
So if I go into scripts and you go into visualizers and we look at the placement visualizer. So this is the one that I had previously and, and it, it just wasn't working with my implementation, but I'm doing something very similar where, you know, in this one, they were asking for, so it's asking for a game object to determine what to show when the volume will fit, what to show when the volume won't fit. And what it was, it was basically just a cube that was red and another cube that was that was green. So, and then a placement. So I, I started looking at these to determine, okay, what do I need to bound to? How do I determine the rotation and the position? And, and that was fairly easy because, you know, Magic Leap luckily already wrote this. So I was able to incorporate it in a little bit different way in my own. So, so what I have, this is the procedural structure script. And, and I know this is getting really, really large. I'm gonna be changing this, but right now this is the one that is also calculating where to place the well, well, where to place the indicators. So what I did in this one, I have a placement indicator region. And anything that is inside this region is basically what, what is being used to for the bounding box that you see on the screen. So I have a placement indicator and I use this placement indicator game object because I clone and I create a cube. So this is the one that will hold that cube or, or rectangle in the in the 3D scene. Then I also wanted to, to set a placement indicator offset because I didn't want the, like I said before, I didn't want that cube to be just way too close to the wall to a point where I couldn't really see that it was green or that it was red. So right now I have a set to point 0.2 in X, Y, and Z. And, and then the next one was the placement indicator, indicator material. And I added this last night because I needed to, I want to use shader graph, like I was saying, and I want to use my own material. I want to be able to change that material at runtime. So instead of doing what Magic Leap did, where they have two different game objects, one green and one, let's see, this one is the will fit, yeah, one green and one red. I instead opted for using just one in game object and then I'm changing the color in runtime by using the material properties. So, and then the other thing that, that is really important for you to know is that we, the placement script, this is the one that will give us the information that we need to determine if we can fit a volume in a specific area in a main reality. So placement is very, very important and you'll see why as I show you the code. So. Some of the things that I that I use obviously is you know generating generating procedural buildings and this is what does all the generation. We get a random seed, I generate a layout, set of walls, and so on. But some of the things that I'm that I'm talking about for the placement, it's in this area. So the first thing that I do, I get the placement component from the parent, because that's where I put it, that's where the that's where the control is. So if I go back to Unity. And the structure is gonna be inside of the placement controller. So what, the way that I do it is I basically grab the placement from the controller, and then that's the one that I know that will give me the placement script, or the better say the pla placement instance. Once I have a placement instance, I basically bind the placement instance to the unplacement event. And then, so this one is executed when I start, you know, when I start working on, on the placement. So if we go in, and look at the some of the events. So this one is when we begin place placing objects in the scene. This one is going to get executed as we're moving the object around, and it's getting data about you know whether we can fit something in that in an area or not. So this one is is very is very helpful because it'll tell us you know can you fit it, can you not fit it. So so that's what I'm doing right now. Is I'm basically wiring this on placement event to my own handle placement event which was similar to what Magic Leap had in their own implementation. So let me go back in and find Magic Leap implementation. There we go. Which is similar to what, let me just double click it so that I can, there we go. So which is similar to that. And you'll see that I have basically almost the same script except I'm doing my own thing in the body of the if statements. But this is the one that I'm using to, you know, as, as somebody's moving the controller around, and a placement object is getting position, this one is gonna get executed. So I do that, I, I wire it up, and then I do a lot of the things that I need to do for procedural generation. 
Then I call the create placement indicator, and this is the one that it's going to create my shape, my primitive shape, which is going to be the bounding box that I have on the buildings. So the first thing that I do is I make sure that it doesn't exist. If it does exist, I destroy it. And then I just call the game object that create primitive, primitive type that cube. And I posted a video about this before. If you're curious about all the different options that you have with this, I have some videos that I can link in the description. Then the next thing that I do, I set the name so that I know, you know, what this game object is. Then I, uh, this is really important. I set the placement indicator transform parent. So what I do is I use this game object and then I put it inside of the parent, which is going to be the controller. So I don't like to have things outside. I basically put, I'm positioning the and placing the new game object inside of the placement controller, which is where the structure is going to be created on. So once I have that, once I have it, I have it, I have added it as a child of the controller, then I use my bounding information. So this bounding information is really, really important. And this is one that I needed to calculate. So what I'm using is I'm, I'm calculating that based on the building structure. I'm not going to go through that, but just know that this is basically containing the data that I need to determine the size of the building and what the center of the buildings are. So I use the center to determine where to position the indicator. And then I use the local scale on the indicator to basically I set it so that I know what size it's going to have. So I grab the bounding size of the bounds of the building and then I add an offset. So the offset is what I was showing you because I needed to have it have a little gap between the bounding box and the building. Then I basically disable the box collider because by default creating primitive creates a collider, a box collider associated with it. And it, in this case it does because it's a cube. And then I also assign the mesh render from the placement indicator to my placement indicator material because I wanted to control the material that was assigned with the bounding box. Then if we go back down to the handle placement event, which is the one that I show you, that was being bound in the generate script. We th So the first thing that I do, I want to make sure that I do have a placement indicator just in case that didn't get created for some reason. It's always good sanity to check to make sure that you, have, you don't have any nulls. Then I get the material from the placement indicator, which is which is the one that I you know that I was showing you that I was associating here. And looking at these, I might not need to yeah I might not need to do this because I'm already assigning it here, so I know that this is the one that I need to change. So what I'm gonna do? Let's go ahead and do this. And there we go. And in fact, I don't need, I don't even need to get an instance because I already have an instance. There we go. And then we can just check to make sure that, you know, it's not null. Excellent. And in fact, we can do, we can do something better on the, on the star just to make sure that the user has this. Make sure I don't have a star. Yeah, I don't have a star. This is what I'm gonna do here. So just do public star. And we'll just do void. There we go. Doesn't need to be public. And then we can just say if placement indicator material equal no, or that way we don't need to do it everywhere, like I'm doing here. I don't need to check for placement indicator. And I do need to check for placement indicator at that point because it gets created after the fact. But we can make sure that the placement indicator material has been set, and we can warn the the level designer. We can say placement indicator material is required and then we just say enable equal false there we go so this is just good for you know for things that are happening that you need to associate in the inspector and that enforces that the level designer is actually doing what is required all right then in that case we don't need to do we don't need to do that anymore all right, and we have, so so the, the way that it works is the handle placement event is, pa is passing an object on the event that it's calling. So if you look at the new fit, which is the variable getting passed in, that it's uh, an, an enum, so we can say new fit. And let me go ahead and, oh, you know what? I'm not even using, 
I'm not even using it at all in this in this case because I am using the placement fit and then checking to see if it equals to an enum. So I was thinking this was an enum and the enum, which it is an enum if you if you think about it. And that's okay, yeah, there we go. You know what? What I think I need to do here and let me make sure that you know I this is probably incorrect. It's not placement that fit. It's probably gonna be new fit equal fit because that's gonna give me the latest the latest state of the placement script of the placement object. So instead of doing placement that fit, we can do just new fit equal equal file. So this will tell me if the shape that I'm trying to place is gonna fit in the area. If it's not gonna fit in the area area, I'm gonna turn it to red. So you can kind of see here placement indicator that color. And all I'm doing in here is if you notice if I do color that red and we look at the values, the RGBA values, if you do one at the beginning, that's gonna be red, and then the last number is gonna be alpha. So I'm saying that I'm saying okay, this is gonna be red, and then the alpha I'm gonna set it to 0 0.03. And then the same thing here, I'm gonna say if I go color green. And let me just do that one more time. So if I do, so if this fits, I'm saying, okay, so I think I have these ones opposite. So let me go ahead and go back. So if I do color and then I do green, yeah, there are, so what I need to do is, so I'm glad that I'm doing this video because I'm fixing a lot of things. All right, so now if we look at the color that, so this one's gonna be green. The one is gonna be on the second parameter so which is which is here and then when it's red it's going to be the first parameter for 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 red all right and then 0 0.03 the other thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to i want to i want to control the alpha at this point so let's go ahead and add a new variable and this one's going to be flow and then placement indicator alpha and we had it set to 0.3 and then we can just serialize it so that we can control it. There we go. And I'm gonna go back down and we can go ahead and, there we go, and one more. Excellent. So I think that's good. So the other thing that I need to do is, if you notice the position right now of the bounds at center, I need to modify so I need to modify the position of that because, so right now I'm setting it and then, but at some point I'm gonna be moving the structure around and I'm not, not anywhere here, I'm, I'm reassigning the position. So what I need to do is I'm going to, I'm going to basically add it and there we go. And we're gonna add it to the update script. So let's go ahead and do, let's just go, to, go ahead and do void update and I know that this is gonna require some extra work, but I think, there we go. And then the other thing that I need, I need to change the, one thing that I'm not doing here is I'm not setting the rotation. So let's go ahead and do that. Rotation, and then we can just grab the rotation of this transform. There we go. I think that should do it. Placement indicator, I'm going to do the same thing that I did above it. If it doesn't equal null, because I don't want to be setting, getting null exceptions. There we go. Fix that. And I think we should be good there. Let me just make sure that I, that I didn't break anything. So I'm just gonna hit play. And let it, let it run and compile. There we go. So if we go and hit X, we should see no changes. And and I can show you the. The other thing that I could show you is the offset that I added. So if I look at the, so right now I have the theme, I have the material. So this is the material that I was showing you that is required. And the other thing that I need is the offset, which I, I didn't make it serializable, but I think it'll be good if we make it serializable. There we go. I think that it's good. Let me just look at a couple more things before I test that again. And I think, okay, there we go. So so one cool thing is like what I can do here, 
now that I have it parameterized, let me go back to my prefab and, and change one setting. So I'm going to go ahead and open the prefab so we can look and see what's already set. And I have the offset set to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So if I wanted to set it closer, I could say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. I can go back and rerun it and see what difference it's making. And you can see that now it's much closer to the buildings. And if I go, there we go. So it's much closer. So I can go back down. So I like 0.2. I think 0.2 is great. You can also go higher. So if we wanted to go up to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5, and, and then rerun it, let's see what we get. And you can see that we have a lot of spaces between the building and the bounding box. So let me go back, change this back to 0.2. I think 0.2 is the one that looks the best. And let me just clear clear that error. It's fine. This is because I'm, I'm not running in Magic Leap. And I'm going to hit play. It's probably going to give me the errors again, but that's okay. Oh, there we go. I didn't. Okay, so we can hit X. The, the other thing that I wanted to show you in this video was also how I'm using shader graph. And if I look at the if I look at the sh structure indicator, you can see that I have a placement indicator material associated with it. And I created this material, the, the shader that this material is using, which is called holographic area. And that's what's giving me a little bit of, you know, you can kind of see a little shading, white shading on the side. And 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 also some transparency so i can i could change this here if i wanted to so if i wanted to change and this is just for different testing that i wanted to do i wanted to make sure that you know if i wanted to change the color i could i could see the color changes so this is really cool where you can see you know change changes of material in real time the and it's not different to the materials that you're already that you're already using the other thing that is cool is i can change the alpha here and because of the way that I'm doing the this material, which I'm using the Freshnel, Freshnel node, you can see that how we have a little bit of lighting there and a little bit of shading. So this kind of looks like a little holographic, you know, material. I could say, you know, if I wanted more alpha, so you can see how that changes. I might use this style for some things in the game. So if I go and make it stronger, you can see that we have a bounding box can also let me go back to something something like that let me go ahead and undo so I don't lose the changes that I had previously and then I also have an outline so I can change the outline so you can see how that is changing the the material so the biggest thing here I haven't really finalized this the biggest thing is I can use shader graph so if I want to use if I want to go into my my shaders and double click it so I'm using, so it's a very, fairly simple shader where, you know, I have an alpha property, which I'm using to control the alpha. I'm using the fresh null effect node, which I'm using to, you know, generate the outline that you see on the material. And then I was starting to play with, I was playing with other different nodes to see if I could get a different look and feel. So that's basically what I'm using shader graph for. I also had, had a lot of issues with making shader graph work and i'm using unity 2018 that one that for the f1 which is the latest releasable unity version so make sure that you use that version and also make sure that if you're using that version and you're coming from a different version shader graph for me was breaking my scene so it wasn't running i was getting really weird behavior and what i had to do is i had to go into assets and then re-import everything and then after that point Shader graph was working and I was able to modify the notes in the graph. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Either you are starting out or you are an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. And don't forget to check me out on Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes early access to source code and a lot of different information that I'm posting besides what I'm doing in YouTube. So thank you very much, guys.